looking forward to this uh, this home game uh, versus UNC. It's our homecoming. Um, one of the last few opportunities we have left to play in front of uh, a home crowd. Um, there's a lot of players that you know know of or have been recruited by North Carolina. I'm sure on both sides. I know this is the South's fourth oldest rivalry, and um, you know we're looking to improve and get back on the winning column. And so with that, I'll t take any questions. <clears throat> when, you, when you look at Carolina scores every week, does it, does it kind of blow your mind? And, uh, and considering that they score so many points, is it important for you guys to try to have more ball control this week, keep their defense off the field? You know, well, their offense is one that I believe, you know, averages a play every 19 seconds. I mean, it is a hurry-up pace. They do it against everybody they've played. They're averaging over 35 points a game, I believe. And so it is one of those 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 offenses that, you know, that want to hurry up, kind of get you out of position, try to wear you out. And uh, it's going to be important for us, you know, to get lined up, have the type of calls, the defensive calls that can help put us in the best position whatever plays that they may run. And then ball control for our offense is, is another, another key element. And so that's, those are some of the things that we've, we've played other teams that have had that similar style of hurry up. And you, know, you go back to things, we, prior game plans, you go back to, to getting uh, yourself ready for that type of pace. I believe we're in shape. I believe some of the things we do against ourselves, we do it ourselves that, you know, We'll have opportunities to get lined up. Now we'll have to execute. This is a very fast team, very athletic team. But uh, we'll we'll rise to the occasion. Mike, you got a sample last season of Marquise Williams and his versatility, but the last two weeks have been ridiculous. The, the numbers he's he's put up. Just your observations on on the progress that he has made and and what's made the difference for him. I'll go the answer the latter. Probably the uh, the confidence level that he has in himself and his abilities. He is a guy that is definitely, if you want to characterize a dual threat guy, he can run the ball, he can escape, you know, from pass uh, from his pass drops, he can throw the ball. He's got uh, you know pretty skilled receivers that he gets the ball out to. And so, you know, it, it's the true essence of an offense that makes you defend the entire field. And then also, you know, the quarterback, he's that extra element because he can run. And he is, as has been alluded to, he's, they put up a lot of points. And it's going to be important for us to, to play the type of defense that you never can contain a guy, but know where he's at at all time because he's a threat, even when you have a pass rush to break contain or scramble. Um, but he adds, he definitely adds an element to their offense that uh, and he's improved the last couple games for sure. Mike, given all the questions about the offensive line going into the season with Luke and Moses graduating and Whitmire being hurt, have you been pleasantly surprised by how the group has played and you know, not only the pass blocking but the run blocking recently? Well, it's been a productive area for us in that you know, when you look at the guys that you know, they were prominent going into the season. And then, you know, I mean, football is a game of injuries and things happen. But it's also a game of the next man up. And collectively, as a group, they have responded. They have performed. You know, they have um, been a pleasant surprise in that, that they played a lot of good teams. We've given up very few sacks. Um, you know, the personnel that goes in, there, there's we vary the personnel. They can play. They can play different positions. And so the versatility of a group that's, you know, you talk about seven, eight, maybe nine guys has, has been an added bonus for us um, because, and they play in the game. And that's something that's been very, very positive for us is having those guys having game time experience. I realize games are decided on points and not yards, but in, in all three of your losses, you have outgained the other team and twice by more than 100 yards. Not turning it over a lot either. Is there any explanation for that? Well, um, we're not getting enough points and we're not holding them down enough. I mean, that's, you know, when you win a game, you score more points than them on offense. You don't give up. But 
it's one of those, it, it's a, collectively, you know, you work in the field position, where you get, where's your average start? Um, the turnovers that occur, you know, where do they get it? You know, where, where's the ball placed? Uh, you know, there's, there's so many other factors. And for us, one of the factors this past game was there were a lot of second and short situations. You want to keep a team out of, you know, those, uh, those, those, sec those third down situations. But second and short, now they can throw the ball, they can run the ball. And, you know, that's something that we got to work hard on um, in the red zone, red zone defense. We have to do better at that as well. You know, offensively, we've got in the red zone and, and, and been productive once we got in there. But the critical moment of that turnover was, was something that, that was costly when you go back and you look at it. So when you play good football teams and the ones that we played that we've, that we've lost to, there is so small slight of a, a margin for error. And, um, you know, and that's and you got to be able to play the game, you know, the four quarters of the game to the best of your ability. And we weren't able to do that against Duke. And we have to get ourselves regrouped and get ready to play as we're getting ready to play this, uh, this North Carolina team. You talk about margin of error. How important for this particular team is it to, to get takeaways? Uh, I mean, obviously, the two losses, when you, you didn't have those takeaways against BYU and then against Duke on Saturday. How important are takeaways to your success? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a characteristic of this defense, of, of, of the team and the way we have to play, you know, play good defense, create turnovers, get to the quarterback and sacks. Um, and also, even statistically, you know, the, having the turnover margin, you know, lends itself to your ability, you know, to win a football game. You know, plus one margin, you know, plus two margin, it goes up percentage wise. And so when you get more turnovers and you give yourself a chance. And although we played, you know, well in, on defense, there have been in the losses opportunities for those turnovers that we haven't gotten quite taken advantage of. I mean, there were a couple balls that were on the ground that they bounced right back up to them and they recovered. But, you know, defense is a, is a defense that you create opportunities for yourself and we have to be able to create turnovers. Statistically, North Carolina is one of the worst defenses in the history of the conference. Do you allow yourself to even look at numbers, or do you just strictly focus on what's in front of you on tape and personnel and tendencies? That's, that's the majority of it, David, what you just said, focusing on um, the tape and the personnel. And, and you know, again, and you look at – you look at who they've, they've lost. They've lost to Notre Dame. They lost to Virginia Tech. They lost to Clemson. They lost to ECU. You know, so those are those are good football teams. You know, and so our job is to take collectively the, what we've seen, personnel, schemes, and then match up or try to do things that affect what they do on offense and defense and special teams. Um, so you know, just like us, you know, every game is a new opportunity to change the fortunes of your program, and I'm quite sure they feel the same way. You know, we want to get back on the winning side, and we have to find those things, those techniques, those schemes that are going to help us and then try to exploit what we've seen on, on tape. But um, we, we don't look at the history of what they've done, and we look at the right now and in front of us and, and how we're going to game plan them to play, to play them in Scott Stadium. Coach in the back, you mentioned the few home games you have left. Uh, is there a sense of urgency for Saturday's game against North Carolina to get back on track and remain in the race? You know, um, we are where we are in the, in the standings right now. Um, and even with that, we're still tied for first place in the Coastal. But you have to play football games. You have to play the games, whether they're home or away. And this next game is a conference game with, a, with an opponent that we played for several, several years. And it's, you know, there's a lot of outside things that go on with it, homecoming and all that stuff, but it's a chance to win a football game, you know, and, and this, this team has been, has been really focused on trying to do that, playing close games, playing tough games, but we got to win some of these close, tough games. And, and if this is the challenge for this week, then we have to rise to the occasion of the challenge. You've had a, a couple of hiccups this season on punt coverage. Switzer hasn't done much this season in punt returns, but last year I think he took five uh, to the house. How much extra emphasis do you place on him this week and maybe even just punting it away from him? Well, there's no doubt that he's a dynamic returner. And, and, you know, in his career, you look back and see the things he's done. And even when you 
when you punt to, to particular players, there, there are strategies for if you, if you roll out and punt. If you do punt it, try to punt it between the, the hash and the sideline. If it goes out of bounds in that situation, it's out of bounds. It's not a penalty situation. So you have to be smart and alert to the dynamic players. And other than the one punt to Boyd a couple weeks ago, um, you know, we were concerned about Crowder this past week. Uh, we, we did a pretty good job. And then the one return, the punt return that, uh, you know, that set up, uh, again, we go or allude back to Pittsburgh. But if you, if you note those dynamic players and then the strategy of kicking to them or not kicking to them, um, that's part of it now. If it goes out of bounds, it goes out of bounds, you know. It's just alerted me that you guys have been doing better inside the 10. But when you're outside the 10, sometimes the red zone, you're bringing on Ian a lot. Um, how, how do you kind of grade your, your red zone success to this point? Well, anytime you get you know, within the 20-yard line, you, you, know, you, you want to get touchdowns. You, you definitely want to get points, but you want to get touchdowns. That's the ultimate because you know, touchdowns you know, give you those opportunities to decide what you do later on in the game. But Ian's situation, other than – you know, the 52-yarder that he missed that was to the right that would have had enough distance to make is a guy that when you get inside, you know, the, the 20 and then even as high as the, the 30 to 25-yard line that you feel that you have point opportunities. So we, we do have to work on the element of getting touchdowns when we get inside that, you know, that low red zone area, mid red zone area. And uh, that's something that, you know, we continue to, we continue to have to improve on. I think I asked you, it's been a month since I asked you about Whitmire. Is he out for the year? Uh, you know, more than likely, um, he he he'd be a guy that won't be able to come back because of what's his back issues. And you know, he's got a series of things that he has to do medically. And we definitely, when we're dealing with backs, you want to take it as you know slow as possible. You want to make sure that the proper care, the diagnosis from our team of physicians, all those things. So um, whatever's best for Jay. You know, we, I, we're 100% behind it. And we, well, at, th at this point, uh, well, we're not counting on them. Uh, we're counting on the guys that can play and can practice right now. But, um, you know, we, we, we know that Jay is out there. He wants to be a part of it. But his health is primary and first and foremost. You faced a lot of what you call dynamic quarterbacks this season, dual threat guys. Have you? And you'll face another one, obviously. But uh, have you learned anything against those other guys? Is there a key strategy in trying to contain them so they, they can't cause too much damage? You know, probably the biggest thing, Jerry, is your, your team pursuit has to, be, it has to be, you know, at a high level. Because when you have dynamic guys like that make one person miss, then you have to have others that are following, that are chasing. And again, their quarterback, is, is, uh, Williams, has done a great job of creating, making a guy miss, and now creating, you know, making the, the pursuit have to make up for the missed assignment or the missed tackle. And he's, he's as good as, as anybody right now that we've seen, and he's very productive, you know, on his offense for what he does and what they ask him to do and the ability to just, you know, just take off and make a play. And we've seen that game after game. David mentioned... Marquise Williams' last two games have been ridiculous. Right before that, he was a bit bogged down by his standards against Virginia Tech. Did you, did you watch that tape? Did you pick up, you know, what did kind of the, the Hokies do to at least make him look human? Well, um, we look at all the games, and we look at all the, the pressures and all the stunts and all the coverages and all those things that, have, you know, that affect you know, his ability. So you go back and you look at you know, Notre Dame, Clemson, East Carolina, you know, as well as uh, Tech. And you just look at the things that you do and, and try to, you know, come up with a game plan or a strategy to negate one of their strengths and or the strengths that they have. So you look at everything, Andrew. You, you look at, uh, like I said, coverages and blitzes. And we're a pressure team. We're going to continue to keep doing that. We have to be smart about when we do it, where we do it, and uh, be aware of, you know, this is a pretty good quarterback that, that can run and throw. Well, if you if you are what you are, then you know you don't want to change a whole bunch of it because you've kind of built your, you know, kind of built your 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 reputation on who you are, and your kids are playing fast, and 
they know what they're doing, then you know you want to continue to doing things that have been successful for you. Ross Burbank came in here and advised us that he has not arrived yet, but uh, ACC blocker, uh, offensive lineman the week two weeks ago. It seems like it's been something of a breakout season for him. Could you talk about Ross and his leadership? Ross has done a fantastic job of of carrying the mantle of being the emotional guy on on the offensive line. That's the spokesman, the uh, the character in his own right. I mean, he's you know he likes wearing short short pants. I mean, it's just crazy some of the things that he does. But he's an offensive lineman, you know, and he's very prideful of the the unit. He's played you know center. He can play both guard positions, and I'm just. Uh, very, it was mentioned about the offensive line and being able to play. He's very much a part of that, of, of a guy that, uh, that has embraced the fact that we don't have a bunch of superstars up front. But we have guys that, that are hard workers, that don't care who gets the credit. They just want guys like Kevin Parks or Shepard or, or Smoke you know, to get the credit. They want to protect the quarterbacks and not give up sacks. And that's, that's, the kind of, that's the group as a whole. And um, the fact that he is... He's emerging, you know, as as a player, as an individual. Is it's good to see. Is he in Luke's mold? You know, he's got a mold of his own. You know, it's um, you know, it's it's what he like. I said, he's a very charismatic type of guy. Um, he loves his teammates. He, he loves his team, this program, and um, he is he's done a phenomenal job of just kind of keeping everybody's spirits up. But um, you know, Luke had his own way and. And Ross definitely has his own unique, unique way. I don't know how you feel about sh uh, shootout games, but if you get into one of those with Carolina, is it something that you enjoy? And, and do you feel like you can survive one of those? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm an old defensive guy, and six to seven is is is, is good to me, you know, for me. But you know, it's um, as long as at the end of the game, we have more points to them. You know, we just – you have to play the game the way the game unfolds. And, and again, you're right, they, they've scored a lot of points. They have, they've had points scored on them. Um, you know, so we have to take, take advantage of the things that we see that we can do to help us. But um, I'm, I'm sure that – I'm sure that we'd like to keep the points down. they like to get a bunch. And we'd like to score points ourselves. I mean, you know, I think we're, we're averaging in the, you know, 20s, 20 20-plus. Um, we'd like to be able to, to score some points, and it goes back to the, you know, those touchdowns in the red zone area. So um, uh, that's what I'll say about that. This guy might have actually, actually been in the shootout. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. A real shootout, right. I may be mistaken. I've been mistaken before. But you won the toss and elected to receive. Is that – do you normally do that or – it, it all it all it all varies on weather where the sun is it's just different things and and getting a possession um, early on was was something we decided to do and um, uh, it, you know every game varies I mean it, it, at home you know most of the time at home uh, we like to defer you know and then take the ball second half on the road it depends on as I said some of the situations. If, if you can get that first drive, you know, and we were driving on the first drive and, and had the turnover there.